Hello everyone, this is the Archfiend. And first things first, there's a link in the video description for my Justin.tv account. Uh, I used to I used to broadcast my live shows from Blog TV, but I just found out last week Blog TV is no more, and it morphed into some site called You Now, and the site blows. So I'm going to use one of my backup accounts that I made years ago that I forgot I even made on Justin.tv, and I'm going to do all my future live shows from there. Now that out of the way, WrestleMania tomorrow, Undertaker Freak and I are going to be doing a live show. We did this a couple years ago and we had a fantastic time. Um, I don't know if there's videos of it still remaining on the internet, but if you find them, it's good times. And if someone wants to record the show for us tomorrow and upload it to their channel, him and I, you know, don't give a shit about it if you do do that. So, anyway, we're going to be broadcasting live Sunday, March, then again it's April, April 7th. I'll get my month straight sooner or later, I just woke up. Anyway. April 7th, Sunday, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Undertaker Freak, 1127 and myself are going to be doing a live show where we pretty much just go over and watch the matches and really that becomes the secondary story because we just get shit-faced drunk and he ended up falling down, splitting his head open, I shit you not, and like started bleeding and everything, but anyway, <clears throat> going to be a lot of burping too. So, you want to see just a total shit show, beyond the shit show that is Wrestlemania, Come on over to my Justin.tv account tomorrow, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and bring your popcorn. Now, that out of the way, I've been a fan of wrestling my whole life. Uh, I, I could tell you that I was watching it back when Mr. T and Hulk Hogan were together feuding against Roddy Piper, and yeah, anyway... It was good times. It's something I've stuck with my whole life, and I've watched and followed the build specifically around the time of WrestleMania every single year. And I gotta say, without a shadow of a doubt, this is hands down the worst, most disappointing, most vile, just. I don't even know what word to link to it. This WrestleMania lead up has been horrible. Horrible! It should have a special feeling this time of year, but it just doesn't. It just doesn't. I'm going to go over the matches and give you my predictions. Not that I really even care who wins half of these matches. I'll give you an idea who I think is going to win. But anyway, for those of you that hate the wrestling videos, you can just turn off the video now. Because the rest is just going to be about gay men in tights wrestling around and touching each other. As you know, the idiots out there would like to call wrestling. Anyway. <sighs> I looked at I looked at the card this morning. I was like I was like you know maybe it's not that bad. I looked over the card again. I was like it's it's, it's that bad. All right. Um, I don't know if any match has been added you know on SmackDown or whatever, but this is the card that I have in front of me right now. Okay, it's gonna be tons of funk. Get it? It's a play on tons of fun. Tons of funk and the Funkadactyls versus Team Road Scholars and the Bella Twins. Now, this is probably the match that will start off WrestleMania, give that, you know, that, that hot start and the, uh, just to not even build up any prediction of sort. Tons of Funk is probably going to win with the Funkadactyls. Now, the saddest part about this match is this match is the only involvement of female wrestlers. If you even want to call any of the four women participating in this wrestlers, yeah, I know the Bella Twins have had a few actual wrestling matches in the past. Uh, the Funkadactyls, I, I, I don't know, have they even ever wrestled? I, I haven't seen it. Maybe it has happened, but I haven't watched every square minute of Raw. Every square minute? Is that such a phrase? Anyway, I uh, haven't watched every single minute of Raw and SmackDown, so who knows? Maybe they've their great tag team chemistry will come through or some shit. Anyways, this is, this is the only aspect of female wrestling on the WrestleMania card. How sad is that? How sad is that there can't even be a women's title match or anything like that? And I, I don't know. You just got to wonder what the female wrestlers, you know, think about this. And they, they usually have some sort of, like, you know, clusterfuck match where all the divas wrestle at once. And I don't even see anything like that on the card. Maybe that'll be, like, the dark match before. They'll have just, like, you know, panties on a pole match or something. And they all come out bottomless. And whoever puts the panties on wins. But... I don't know, that's just me being a pervert. Anyway, 
Uh, look for tons of funk to win, and look for a hilarious, hilarious dance comedy sketch with Fat Albert. Yes, a guy who came over as this serious wrestler from Japan has now been relegated to being the funny dancing fat guy, the gimmick that has been done time and time and time and time again. And now he's got a WrestleMania match. Let me see, who's, who's Rey Mysterio fighting? Oh, oh. Who's Kofi Kingston fighting? And oh, 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 guys like that don't have matches? But Fat Albert does? All right, let's look at another match here. Chris Jericho versus Fandango. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Someone is having their debut match on WrestleMania. Fandango? Now granted, I, this is probably going to be a pretty decent match, but it's more the principle of this guy hasn't proven his worth in the company other than being an NXT guy. He was from NXT, I think. Anyway, this is a guy, again, like, where's Kofi Kingston? A guy that's busted his ass in the company since day one. Oh no, we gotta have room for a Fandango match. Who's Fandango? I don't know. I haven't seen him wrestle yet. He could suck ass. And the thing that's really dumb about this is this could end Fandango's career. If he goes out and wrestles and just lays an egg, how are you going to recover from that? This is going to be a very educated, a very wrestling smart, high IQ crowd here. It's in New York City, even though it's in New Jersey. Don't let the sign fool you. Anyway, this is going to be a very smart crowd. If this guy fucks up, God forbid he has a botch or two, he's done! He's done! This crowd is going to be merciless on him. Because the crowd doesn't know what to expect. They don't know, oh, should we anticipate this match? Or who is this guy? I... He fucks up, he's done! I'd like to see him recover, but who knows? This could be a good match. Like Chris Jericho, he always puts on a good match, especially around WrestleMania time, so. We'll see. Oh, we have the WWE Tag Team Championship being defended. Wow! It's been a while since I've seen that happen. I think a couple years. I mean, you kind of forget around WrestleMania time that there's even a Tag Team Championship. Anyway, um... We got Team Hell No versus Dolph Ziggler and Biggie Langston. We go from Fandango to Biggie Langston. These two guys have WrestleMania matches, and they've had a, a total combined number of what? I think Biggie Langston was in one mixed tag match a couple weeks ago. That's it. These are two guys that the company says, yeah, it's, 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 it's time for them to get a moment in the spotlight. Like, WrestleMania should be that moment in your career that you build up to and you finally achieve through years of backbreaking labor and hard work in the ring, but oh, no, who cares? I got the AJ's boyfriend and the guy who has the dancing gimmick. Let's, you know, give them a WrestleMania match because they deserve it right away. Boy, I really, that really makes WrestleMania feel special now. Um, oh, anyway, Chris Jericho versus Fandango. Um, I, I, Fandango will probably win. Um, as far as the WWE Tag Team match, look for Team Hell No to win. Uh, look for Dolph Ziggler to possibly do something with his Money in the Bank briefcase a little later on in the night, which we'll get to in a second. All right, Ryback versus Mark Henry. Oh, my God, I've been waiting for this match ever since they had the Ryback gimmick debut. I've been waiting for this match and just saying, like, oh, I can't wait till they match up, match him up with Mark Henry, which was said by absolutely no one. This is, this is a feud that started weeks ago that if you had to rank up people, you know, who you would see in a, in, a, in a WrestleMania match versus a guy like Ryback who has been just, had a rocket shoved up his ass and throttled to the moon over the past few months, whether we liked him or not, we get a payoff of having him fight Mark Henry at WrestleMania. I predict this match to get the same crowd reaction that Brock Lesnar and Goldberg got in WrestleMania 20. Was it 20? Yeah, it was 20. Um, I just... I don't see how this match is going to go over well with the crowd. It's going to be just really slow. A little power move here, a little power move there. Rest hold, rest hold. Ryback wins when he's... Un I, he's not going to be able to do his finisher. He's not going to be able to do the... I, I can't remember what the name of his finisher is, but some geek out there is going, Oh, it's, it's the atomic ass drop, you dumbass! Anyway, um, I can't think of the name of his finisher. It's like, anyway, uh, look for, look for Ryback to somehow win with 
whatever shitty version of his finisher that he's going to whip out. I don't... Oh, the Intercontinental title is being defended here. Wow, that's a... You don't see that every WrestleMania. Someone's going to cry. You know, actually you do. It's 80% of the title. Shut up. Wade Barrett versus The Miz. Um, I, I can tell you right now, I... I I have I missed the hype for this. Like I I don't even know really where it was, and I've been trying to watch Raw, and I'm like, oh oh, this match is happening. I kind of really don't even remember this being booked. But look for Wade Barrett to keep the belt. Gives a fuck. Randy Orton, Sheamus, and Big Show versus the Shield. Oh, well, that's weird. They have Big Show teamed up with Randy Orton and Sheamus, who, who are faces. Big Show has been a solid established heel for several months now. That can't be right. Oh, that's right. A few weeks ago, Big Show comes out and points out in, at the WrestleMania sign with two faces in the ring, and that all of a sudden makes you a face. This is a WrestleMania match. Someone that basically turned the tide of their gimmick in a split second and they're being thrown into a WrestleMania match. Again, this really feels special this year. Oh my god, I just, oh, this is going to be such a splendid WrestleMania. Look for the Shield to win. Alberto Del Rio versus Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger has been a proven, failed gimmick in this company. Now I know they repackaged him as the super neoconservative, whatever the hell you want to call it, have him coming out with Dutch Mantel, which I've been liking, but it's the thing that he's been given his chance in the company, and he's failed. He's failed spectacularly. He's failed to the point that he was getting jobbed out months ago, just as guys like a Ryback. Ryback beat him in like a minute. Like, this is the guy. Ryback just destroyed in a match in under a minute. It was like two months ago. Now, Ryback is to the point that he's fighting Mark Henry on the biggest pay-per-view of the year. And now Jack Swagger is fighting for the heavyweight belt. How, how is this match supposed to feel special? We, we just saw Jack Swagger go through almost an entire year of floundering in the company. And now it's like, oh, wait, 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 he's, he's a conservative and he got busted for drugs in real life. But if that happens to Rob Van Dam, they take the title off from him and then they kick him out of the company. But happens to Jack Swagger, push is just allowed to go through. Anyway, Jack Swagger gets a world heavyweight title shot because he's got a repackaged gimmick as this super conservative American. Who, by the way, had a match leading up to this feud against... Hacksaw Jim Duggan, it was like a couple weeks ago at that, I think it was that throwback episode of Raw. Now, wouldn't you say that if your gimmick is that you're just like, you know, this super conservative American, that they wouldn't fight a blue-blooded American, someone whose pretty much entire gimmick since they've been a wrestler has been this big super USA guy. Like, what sense does that even make to book that match? Why did they have Hacksaw Jim Duggan fight Jack Swagger? Again, WrestleMania, it should feel special, the build-up should feel special, and you just get shit like this leading up to the... What, what happened? What happened, WWE? Um... Look for look for Jack Swagger to lose this match, and look for Dolph Ziggler to use his Money in the Bank briefcase and take the belt off of old Mr. Mexican here, Alberto Del Rio. I don't know. I guess it makes WrestleMania feel more special if it happens here. I can't see them, you know, saving that Money in the Bank briefcase for anything else. Congratulations to Dolph Ziggler. The now two-time world champion. Half of you probably don't even remember the first time he held the belt. Anyway. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, Triple H must retire and, like, you know, Stephanie's going to get anal from Brock that night if Triple H loses or something like that. I, who knows. All right. Um, this is a good match. This is... I, I've always wanted to see these two guys butt heads. Oh, wait. I did. It was called at SummerSlam a few months ago. We're getting a SummerSlam rematch here at WrestleMania now. Not saying that that automatically makes it bad. And there's been a number of times where we've had a rematch from SummerSlam carry out at WrestleMania, and they've been good matches. But 
for a guy like Triple H that only wrestles now at most two to three times a year, and we're seeing a repeat match of him, and on top of this, Brock Lesnar is someone who only wrestles on a limited three, four times a year, it's looking like, and we're seeing a repeat match from him. Oh boy, that's a, that's a special WrestleMania feel right there. That, that really makes this feel really special. Biggest pay-per-view of the year, people. Um, I, and on top of that, the Brock went over on SummerSlam, so there's, there's no fucking way that Triple H would lose twice to this guy, right? Anyway, it's probably the most obvious outcome for a match I've ever seen in WrestleMania history. Look for Triple H to win via pedigree. yippity dippity doo da -de. The Undertaker versus CM Punk. Um, first off, I want to say that, yeah, I do feel that skit from Monday Night was offensive with the urn and the ashes, mainly because Paul Bearer's children have said they've since come out and, and found that offensive. Uh, if you offend the living members of someone that has died, I don't care what you're doing to get heat or something like that. That shit just ain't cool. Uh, that aside... This is this is just a match that, again, it doesn't have that special feeling to it because it's not really one. I didn't hear too many people talking about it. Uh, there's actual footage of an interview of CM Punk. Um, I don't know when it was. I heard it on a, a wrestling blog that I listened to. It was an interview of CM Punk, and they asked him, um, "Do you, do you think you'd ever take a take a match with Undertaker at WrestleMania?" and try and challenge the streak, and I think it was like some years ago that he was giving this interview, and he goes, he goes, no, I'd never take part in a match where the outcome is predetermined that you're not going to win. Basically him saying that, you know, why would you accept a match like that knowing that there's absolutely no way in hell you're going to win? So, here he is. He's accepting the match, so the obvious answer is, you know, they're not going to end the streak, right? I think there's, there's no way in hell CM Punk loses this match, in all honesty. No way in hell. I think that this was someone that Undertaker, which, which, don't be mistaken, people, Undertaker picks who he wants to fight at this point in his career. He's earned that right. You know, I don't, I don't see Vince saying, all right, we're going to throw you up against CM Punk, and whether you like it or not, we're gonna, that's the match it's going to be. No. I see that Undertaker picked this guy out. He sees him as the future of the company, and he wants to put him over. Uh, I know people are going to say, well, CM Punk has been released, isn't booked for shows after WrestleMania, I think it's just going to be uh, an angle along the lines of he's beaten to quote-unquote proverbial death. He got beat so bad that he can't even compete. That's the beating he had to endure to beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. He just flat out couldn't even compete for months after WrestleMania. And I think it's going to be a plausible storyline. I think it's going to go over well. And I see CM Punk winning. And even Undertaker, he said last week, he said, you know, the streak, it doesn't even matter here because even if you do beat me, you won't live to enjoy it. And I'm paraphrasing there. And, yeah, I think it's going to be to the point that Undertaker, uh, that CM Punk is just basically, like, carried out on a stretcher and it doesn't even look like he's breathing. It's going to be, you know, something like that. That and Undertaker going 21-0 and 0 means absolutely nothing right now. It means absolutely nothing. And... The one thing that really made me just full out go for CM Punk winning this match is that 400 plus day title reign that, that CM Punk had and then lost it to The Rock. When that happened, I was like, I was like, this motherfucker better get a big reward to job out to the guy that's just, you know, coming in just to, you know, stop in for a cup of coffee and leave again. I was like, this guy's got to get a big payoff. Then when I heard the WrestleMania match booked, I was like, oh, they're going to have him go over on Taker. Oh, all right. He's finally going to get one over on Taker at WrestleMania. All right. This is great. Anyway, um, I don't see the streak be staying intact. If, the, if it does stay intact, it, it, people are just going to say, oh, that was the most obvious outcome for a WrestleMania match <laughs> after the Triple H Brock Lesnar match people just had to watch, which is probably going to be the match before. So I look, I, I look to see CM Punk winning here, but if he doesn't, I won't be surprised either. All okay, right. Now going on to the world championship match. All right. This is probably going to be the main event of the pay-per-view. 
We have The Rock versus John Cena. Oh, wait, this was the card from last year. Let me get the right one. All right, the, the main event for this year is The Rock versus John Cena. Again, do you get, the, you get that special vibe here, people? Do you just feel how special this WrestleMania is? We're getting a rematch from WrestleMania last year in the main event. <clears throat> um, on top of all this, we have basically two faces going at it. Now, people are going to think, well, you had two faces going at it when the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan faced off at WrestleMania for the swapping of the... Or no, I think. It wasn't... under It was the Ultimate Warrior had the Intercontinental title and Hulk Hogan had the heavyweight belt. And I do believe it was for winner keeps both belts. Anyway. Um, this match... It's great. I mean, they obviously have The Rock on here to just draw a few extra buys on the pay-per-view. And I, I, conventional wisdom would tell you there's there's no fucking way John Cena is going to lose in a WrestleMania main event for the second year in a row. I don't know. Something tells me. Something tells me The Rock's going to win this match. And he's going to stick around the company just for a few months longer to eventually hand off the belt to John Cena, but then again, this is WrestleMania, and I can't see them ending the pay-per-view with either CM Punk winning, or the streak going on for Undertaker. Oh, and another thing about the Undertaker-CM Punk match, what do you guys think the storyline for this would have been if Paul Bearer didn't die in real life? Because it's like, once that happened, that became the storyline, which shows you how lazy the booking and forethought was for this angle. It's like, oh, Paul Bearer died. Uh, 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 oh, instant storyline. Make that. Oh, 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 rewrite everything. We're just going to go with that. Like, granted, yeah, they should have made that part of the storyline. But it is literally the entire storyline. Oh, my God. There's, it's pretty much everything is about Paul Bearer's death. It's like they had nothing else original to contribute to that feud. Special feeling, WrestleMania, book on the fly. So anyways, you're going to end WrestleMania either with Punk going over on Undertaker, which would be special, but you'd have the heel winning, and that's the ultimate moment to end WrestleMania on. I don't see WWE doing that. Or you have the streak continuing, the streak and Undertaker and his relevancy is just is just not there right now enough to be the ending period on WrestleMania. I could be wrong, and WWE could try and end it with something like that. It doesn't have that special feeling. And the only other thing you could think of is the Triple H Brock Lesnar match being the main event, but there's no fucking way that's going to be the final match. I mean, unless Brock does give Stephanie anal in the middle of the ring at the very end, that it's the only way I could see it being the end-all, be-all to the WrestleMania this year. So we're going to have The Rock versus John Cena be the ending here, and I cannot see them ending with Rock going over on John Cena again being the ending statement for this WrestleMania. Unless there is some sort of huge screw job run-in that, you know, a big name returns or debuts or something, I, I just don't know, man, but... Uh, you, you gotta think John Cena's gonna win and the crowd's gonna boo the shit out of him. Trust me, the crowd is going to annihilate, annihilate Cena again. <clears throat> very high IQ crowd for WrestleMania, especially when it's in New York City, even though it's in New Jersey. Anyway, I see John Cena winning and I see the crowd just, you know, shitting all over the match. And anyway, Rock can go back to making shitty movies that no one sees. I know, G.I. Joe, the sequel, whatever, was like number one in the box office or some shit, who cares. <sighs> There's my WrestleMania review and predictions for all of you that keep asking for more wrestling videos. There you go, you got one. Trust me, if you don't like wrestling, watch, come to our live show tomorrow night with me and Undertaker Freak 1127. We're both gonna get just fucking shit-faced and like I said, two years ago when we did this, it was probably the most spectacular show that you're ever going to see. But I don't remember any of it because I was too drunk, so I lied. Anyway, 
Uh, and for anyone that wants to record and upload it to their YouTube channel, knock yourself out. We're not going to care. We're not going to fly you. Like, oh, no, you used our footage. Uh, who cares? Do, knock yourself out. Anyway, have a great day, guys. Um, I'll see you hopefully over at my Justin TV. Again, link for everything's in the video description. Tomorrow, 7 p.m. I might be running a little late. Girl Fiend and I are going to a benefit concert. So if not, just have Undertaker freak, uh, I don't know, dance with a bowling pin on his head or something naked. Anyway, have a great day, guys.